What's up guys? Welcome back to Dame Untamed. For those of you who are new here, my name is Nikki and this is my adventure channel. Welcome to part two of Bestie Road Trip Adventure here in BC. If you're new to my channel or haven't seen part one yet, stop right there. Head on over to my videos and click on part one of this series. You definitely don't want to miss some of the amazing spots we've already visited, including Stanley Park, Joffrey Lakes Provincial Park, Whistler Village, and so much more. Then you can come back and watch this one. Okay, great, let's get started. How are you enjoying your hotel bed? I'm just <laughs> lounging. <laughs> just lounging. And are you ready for adventure day number three? Three? Tresemme. 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 Oh, is that your friend? Who's that? Is that Auntie Lindsay? Oh, that's a good scratch. That's a good scratchy. Good boy. Today's video is all about exploring beautiful Squamish. I'm lucky enough to call Squamish home and I definitely wanted to highlight just how special it is the best that I could in the short amount of time that we had. For those of you who followed my channel for a little while, you might be able to answer this question. What is this mountain called? If you know the answer, please let me know in the comment section. All right, let's get Adventure Day 3 started. Our first stop is Murren Provincial Park. All right, gang, so we just arrived at Murren Park, drove into the parking lot, and it was hella full. Hella full. full. To the brim. Hella full. Yeah, we tried to park in a tow zone. Unfortunately, the parks Park guy was here and he's like, y'all are gonna get towed. And we're like, oh my gosh. So we kind of did some loops and then we parked to the front and waited for some people to walk out. The first people that walked out, we were like, yo, are you leaving? <laughs> and then just- and they're like, yes. And just was glued We're like, okay, hey, we're tail. following you. Glued so we did tail. and we just parked and I did a nice little- In a little, legit spot. Yeah, we got a spot. We're not gonna get towed. No. Nope. Day's off to a good start. Yeah, day three, baby. Day three, let's go. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. This is nice. For those of you who follow my channel, you know that we've gone to this viewpoint before, but it's Lindsay's first I have time. Not. <laughs> so off I we go. You did it. You did it. <laughs> Woohoo! And there's nobody here. This is great. I've been to this viewpoint a few times now and it is definitely worth it every single time. To the viewpoint itself, it's about 1.4 kilometers out and back. Though the distance is short, there's an elevation gain of 112 meters, so this hike is definitely no easy feat. It's pretty much straight uphill for about 20 minutes. So make sure to wear proper footwear and pack some water for this steep trek. I'm gonna pull my groin and be out for like four months because I'm 32 now. Okay, your turn. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah. And there we go. <laughs> A for effort. Oh. A I for effort. Be better on this side. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That was very well done. <laughs> Doing okay? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Cankles still intact? Yeah, still intact. Good. Okay, so we just head off the Clarissa's viewpoint. We are on our way back to the car, but we're gonna do a little review here. Pregnant friendly hike, yes or no? Uh, yes, <laughs> but hard. But like, so there's a little bit of an incline. Yeah, but you gotta just listen to your body and, and take breaks when you need to take a break. As soon as it gets really hard and you can't catch your breath, it's over. It's over, it really is. <laughs> Thumbs up for the hike, whether you're pregnant or not. A little bit of work involved. Mm -hmm. Very rewarding, Don't yeah. Okay, we are finishing up here at Marin Provincial Park. We're probably gonna get hounded by people who are waiting for our spot. And we are off to Porto Cove Provincial Park. Porto Cove Provincial Park is a 56 hectare oceanfront oasis offering driftwood beaches, picnic areas, sunken ships, artificial reefs, pebble beaches, and endless beachcombing opportunities in the intertidal zone. It may be small, but campers and ocean lovers can't get enough of it. Lindsay was particularly interested in adding to her sea glass collection. Show me the sea glass that you founded. 
Can I see? Oh yeah, it's definitely okay. So it's got a little, little rough edges. Yeah, still, but, but it's definitely quite. rounding. You can tell yeah. that it's like not as sharp as it once was. This for one sure. is rounded for sure. Yeah, nice. But it, it's it's not sharp enough to cut you, but good find. Good find. All right, after reevaluating our search parameters, <laughs> we found a better <laughs> location, and we got lots. Next on the itinerary was picking up the third member of our party and continuing on to see the magnificent Shannon Falls. Okay, we got a parking spot. We're in the overflow because the parking lot at the provincial park is actually insane. So we're here. Now we cross the lights and we go see Shannon Falls. Ranking a species third tallest waterfall, Shannon Falls thunders down from a height of 335 meters. The base is a well-maintained boardwalk and network of nature trails, taking you past massive trees, streams, and picnic areas for the whole family. <laughs> oh shit, that's a big waterfall up there. Oh my god. Uh -oh. <laughs> the falls are located just off the Cedar Sky Highway, right before arriving into the town of Squamish, so it's an easy pit stop and the hike is fully accessible. After enjoying some sightseeing at the falls, we made our way to the Sea to Sky Gondola. For those of you who follow my channel, you'll be no stranger to this epic place. I visited the Sea to Sky Gondola for the first time back in the winter and took advantage of all of the fun winter activities that were offered. If you plan to visit Squamish in the beautiful winter season, check out that video for some more information regarding ticket prices, hours of operation, activities, food options, and so much more. So do you see that where the gondola goes over the hump there? I, I'm you, not sure I want to know before I get on it, but continue. That's one third of the way up. That's, that's <laughs> F-Town. That is pure F-Town. That is just F-Town. <laughs> We're stressing. We are stressed. <laughs> Happy Pride Month! Woohoo! Happy Pride! We reached the top of the gondola, checked out the large viewing platform overlooking beautiful house sound, and then made our way to the suspension bridge. If you've been following along since part one of this road trip series, you'll know Lindsay has quite the fear of bridges. So we were very proud of her for facing her fears on this 100 foot long suspension bridge. Okay, another item off the bucket list. We got a bald eagle hanging out up here. Look at him, he's so cool. Nice. Next, we made our way to the Panorama Trail to check out some walking trails and more viewpoints. My favorite event that the Sea to Sky Gondola offers is called Mountain Music. Every Friday night during the summer between 5 and 8, well-known local bands play on the patio and it draws quite the crowd. 
but make sure to arrive early because it seems like the entire Sea to Sky corridor decides to show up for these events. After a beautiful afternoon at the gondola, we scooted home, freshened up, and decided to head out for dinner. Question for y'all, have you seen the show Virgin River on Netflix? If so, our restaurant of choice for dinner might look quite familiar. The Watershed Grill is located along the Squamish River in Brackendale, the small community on the outskirts of Squamish. It also doubles as the filming location for Jack's Bar in the show, which is kind of neat for a Virgin River fan like me. Due to its popularity and beautiful location, the wait times at the Watershed Grill can be a bit long, especially over dinner on a weekend. We knew this going in, so we brought something to keep us occupied while we waited. Brackendale also happens to be one of the best places for bald eagle viewing in the country. Unfortunately, the high season for viewing is during the winter months, but we brought our binoculars anyway. The walk along the Squamish River offers breathtaking scenery of the mountains and the provincial park. We didn't see any eagles this time, but the views were amazing. After about 45 minutes of waiting, we were called to our table. Happy Saturday, guys, and cheers to you visiting us. <laughs> We tried the river burger and the wild salmon burger. So delicious. Our last order of business for the night was getting comfy, grabbing a drink, and cozying up to our favorite game, Crazy 8 Countdown. Oh man, ain't this the old nostalgic moment? Oh, yeah. We played this game almost every day growing up as kids. We used two decks and are extremely invested. Oh, pick up six, bitch. How did I know? <laughs> she said, pick up six, bitch. <laughs> Sadly, it was all of a sudden Lindsay's last day. But this trip wouldn't be complete without a visit to the Crab Apple Cafe, some of the best brunch in town. This is Stav's second coffee, and he's still not awake. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean. Yum! Yeah, I'm here for this departure breakfast. Our final stop before sending Lindsay on her way was downtown Squamish. The downtown core is a vibrant mixture of art, culture, and commerce with stunning mountain vistas at every turn. Squamish in the summer is a vibe. Bus. Hello, Skylinks. You're taking my friend away from me now. Bye, friend. Love you. Goodbye. <laughs> well, folks, that's all for part two bestie adventure here in beautiful Squamish. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did creating and sharing it with all of you. Let me know down in the comments if you've been to Squamish and or if you have any spots that you think I should add to the itinerary for my next visitor. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell on your way out so you don't miss my next upload. I'll see you guys next time.